In this video I'm going to look at the properties of ionic compounds. So before we start looking at the properties we'll just have a look at what happens in ionic bonding and we'll use sodium chloride as our example. So we've got a sodium atom here on the left with its electron, one electron in the outer shell and we've got a chlorine atom on the right here with seven electrons in its outer shell and so the sodium atom will give this electron to the chlorine atom and so the sodium atom becomes a sodium ion so it's got one more proton in its nucleus and electrons in the shells so it gains a positive charge and the chloride ion now has got this extra electron still got 17 protons in the nucleus but it's got 18 electrons so it becomes negatively charged these two ions will now attract each other because they have opposite charges and that's the ionic bond. And so if we look at this diagram now we've got the positive sodium ion and the negative chloride ion and rather than just one of each being present we get this giant lattice structure forming and so we often call that a, a lattice structure is just a regular arrangement, a 3D arrangement, or it could also be described as a giant lattice structure. So because of this giant ionic lattice structure, it's going to take a lot of energy to break all this strong electrostatic attraction between all these oppositely charged ions, and so as a result, ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points as you can see in the table. The next property we'll look at is the electrical conductivity. So you can see in the solid state the ions are fixed in this lattice, this giant ionic lattice, very strong forces of attraction holding all the ions together in this huge 3D crystal arrangement and so because the ions can't move it can't conduct electricity. If you supply enough energy to melt it, so make it molten, or if you dissolve it in water, make an aqueous solution, and we'll explain in a moment why that's possible. But if you do that, either of those, you're breaking the lattice apart, and so the ions are mobile now, they can move, and so it can now conduct electricity. And you can see there that the positive ions have moved to the negative terminal, and the negative ions to the positive terminal. It's worth remembering that it's because of the ions being able to move and not electrons. So far too often I see students write electrons here when they should be writing ions. So ionic compounds conduct when molten or in solution because the ions can move. Before we go on to explaining the solubility of ionic compounds, I just want to talk a little bit about water molecule. And just in case you haven't studied this yet, water molecules are what we call polar molecules. And what that means is they have slight charges on the atoms. So the oxygen has a slightly negative charge on it. So we represent that with this delta minus sign. And the hydrogens have slightly positive charge to them. We represent that with a delta plus. So you can see in this diagram we've got our giant ionic lattice. And it's surrounded by water. And you can see that the slightly negative part of the water molecule, so the oxygen, will be attracted to this positively charged ion. So there's going to be an attraction there. And then again the same here. And then the negative ion will be attracted to the, the hydrogen of the water molecule, which is slightly positive. And the overall effect of that is it just starts to break the lattice down. You can see that quite clearly now in this diagram. The lattice is now starting to be broken down, so this positive ion has been pulled away by the attraction from the slightly negative part of the water molecule, the oxygen, and the negative ions being pulled away by the 
slightly positive hydrogen part of the water. So what you'd end up with there would be an isolated positive ion and the water molecule, if I just represent a water molecule like this, would just completely surround it. So you'd have an isolated positively charged ion and you'd also have an isolated negatively charged ion. So we'll put the water molecule that way around now. And so the lattice is completely broken down. So this is obviously the oxygen. And these are the hydrogens. So the hydrogen, slightly positive, is going to be surrounding the negative ion.